It was the 4th of July. It was the opening night of the Barber of Seville here in London. And any opening night is full of nerves and excitement. The cast had a great buzz going into this because we'd had an exceptional dress rehearsal. We'd been rehearsing quite thoroughly and we were really excited about it. Um, the nerves seemed to sort of work themselves out, but they took a giant leap forward <laughs> during about a third of the way through the show. I had just finished my big aria, Una Voce Poco Fa, and I was running in excitement across the stage to speak with Figaro, and I fell. And the minute I went down, I knew something quite tremendous had happened. I was assuming it was a sprain, but I knew that I couldn't put much weight on it. I almost literally crawled off the stage, got some ice on it immediately. The Royal Opera House staff came to my <laughs> immediate rescue. And I hobbled through the rest of the show with a crutch, but more importantly, with the aid of my wonderful cast, who gave me a chair when I needed it, held my arm when I needed it, pulled me slightly to the right, and they were really champions in, in helping me get through the show. The curtain came down on our ecstatically received opening night and I plopped down in a chair, got some ice on my foot and happily somebody gave me a glass of champagne which helped take the edge off for a moment. And then I was whisked away to the emergency room. After a few hours of waiting and an x-ray, the doctor sat down to inform me, much to my surprise, I had actually broken my fibula. I was surprised because I was assuming it had just been a bad sprain, but my turn to shock the doctor was next because I told him I'd stood on it for three hours for the remainder of the show, and that apparently was the opposite of what you are supposed to do. But I ended up getting my plaster cast on, and from there on I was ready to roll. So then the problem presented itself of how do I go on for the remainder of these five shows? And the options were a bit limited. I was told that I could not put weight on my leg for six weeks, and we were functioning on a set that was lifted off the floor of the theater and tilted forward. So to be on crutches and to try and navigate that obstacle course was a bit of a challenge, and so that was taken off the table. The other options were to bring in another Rosina, to have me perhaps sing it from the side of the stage and somebody else would walk the part, or to try and find a way to put me in a wheelchair where I could still enter into the drama. This was tricky because there was a tiny narrow passageway at the front of the boxed set and the edge of the orchestra pit, and there was just enough room to maneuver a wheelchair. It was a bit dangerous, so the idea was to have somebody push me and to enter into the action as well. So I came to the theater that evening for my second show, ready to be pushed around in a wheelchair, and the opera theater had actually provided me with one of these athletic wheelchairs that's quite mobile and quite maneuverable. I sat in it for about three minutes, and I started to feel quite at home, which was unusual because it's my first time in a wheelchair. But I found that I could spin it, and I could turn it, and stop and start rather easily. So I said to the assistant director, unfortunately our directors were away already after the opening night, so we were stuck to figure out a solution by ourselves. I said, I think I can actually do this. So we took the wheelchair onto the stage, and sure enough, I actually felt really comfortable in it. And I think people around me were a bit nervous, saying, we don't want you to fall into the pit. But I was able to actually deal with it well. And the idea came to me, I said, Rosina is such an independent, feisty character, she can't be pushed around by somebody in the chair. So we went for it. Maestro Papano made an announcement before the crowd that night and said, what you're going to see tonight, folks, is completely unrehearsed. <laughs> and we don't know how it's going to turn out, but we want to give you this show regardless. And so sure enough, for the next three hours, the cast and myself improvised, in essence, a new staging of the Barber of Seville with Rosina on wheels. The first act actually flowed pretty well and we were feeling very good about it. Singers would come down to the edge of the stage to converse with me. I was finding a way to give character to the wheelchair and we were feeling pretty good about it. At intermission, however, we realized that there were going to be a few problem moments coming up 
primarily the storm sequence where it had been rehearsed that Rosine actually destroys the home and destroys the set herself in her anger and her despair. There was no way for me physically to do that. So actually the idea came up that I would call Berta on, who we had a bit of camaraderie going on throughout the show, and in the feminine unity, she would help me destroy the set. And kudos to her because she didn't know, she, she'd never rehearsed this at all, so she hadn't paid attention to the exact musical cues. And so in essence, I was conducting her through the performance. And I think what we ended up with was something quite extraordinary, a real camaraderie between these two women, and in essence, the same, the same drama, and the same story that we had rehearsed during the weeks prior was told. The original plaster cast I received in the emergency room was just a temporary one, and I had to go back to receive my permanent six-week plaster cast. And I noticed that they had some bright neon pink tape that they could wrap my plaster cast with. And I thought, that's the only option for Rosina. She obviously would have a bright pink cast. So it was obvious that that got a lot of attention during the course of the show. But what seemed to perhaps maybe miss the radar screen a little bit was the fact that I had five extraordinary cast members by my side that helped tell this story. We had a remarkable time in the rehearsal process, working on the details of this show, really making it as if we were doing the Beaumarchais play and not an opera. It was very detailed and the directors spent so much time on really minute character portrayals and details. And I was sick to my stomach that that was shattered. I thought it might be shattered by the fact that I'd have to be in a chair and all the staging would have to be altered. Instead, what grew out of this, because of the foundation that we had laid during the rehearsal process, was the playground for us to play. We still were true to the characters that we had fleshed out during the rehearsal process. We were still telling the same story. It's just some of the physical actions had to be modified. And this takes an extraordinary talent and commitment from the other cast members. In fact, perhaps their job was actually a bit more difficult than mine because I was stuck in one place and they had to make all the physical adjustments. But I will forever be grateful that they were so talented and wonderful and supportive and generous in the way that they pulled me through these shows. And in fact, we told the story of the Barber of Seville to the public. I'd like to say that this was quite a remarkable experience for me. I've sung Rosina a lot and I thought I knew everything there was to know about her. And instead, being thrust into the con confines of a wheelchair was quite extraordinary because for the first time I physically felt her frustration and her confinement. And I really think that I was able to sense this idea of how desperate she was to break free. So I enjoyed it immensely and learned so much. There were challenges. I was using very different muscles in my body than I'm used to, all the upper body strength to move this wheelchair. And I had to be very careful to protect my singing apparatus. I had to prop myself up on a few towels, which I don't think you'll see, but they're under there on the wheelchair so that I could sit as straight as possible and, and use the height of the wheelchair and the, and the defiance in Rosina to sing. It was challenging, but I think the fact that it's a role that I know so well, I was able to find a way to make it work.